I'm Larry Vickers, the host of TAC TV. I'm a trained firearms professional, and we have safety measures in place on each and every episode. Therefore, if you're not properly trained, do not attempt anything you see on this show ever. All right, gang, Larry Vickers here, TAC TV, new show, new season. Now, if you've watched my shows in the past, you know we've done the M4 carbine many times. This year on this episode, we want to take everything to a whole new level. Now, to run you up to speed on what an M4 carbine is, it's a shortened carbine version of the U.S. Army's M16. Now, back in the day, it was known as a CAR-15 before it's officially adopted by the U.S. military as the M4 carbine. Very popular with special operations because of its shortened length. Very useful in vehicles, helicopters, and urban settings. It's getting a lot of time overseas, and there's more accessory manufacturers and, in fact, more M4 manufacturers now than ever before. And we're going out here to the private test facility for TAC TV, which happens to belong to a friend of the show here in Central North Carolina. It's a 300-acre facility. We also happen to know that Daniel Defense is out here doing an endurance test on some of their carbines. I happen to be a paid consultant for Daniel Defense, so I'm inviting myself and the crew out here. We're going to take a Daniel Defense M4 carbine and do a torture test. We're going to do a variety of things to it, all within the realm of what could happen to a carbine, but take it to an entirely new level to see where the gun fails. Our theory is the gun is a lot more durable than you might think, but we're going to find out because we're going to do things to this gun I guarantee you you've never seen on TV before. Torture testing an M4 carbine typically includes uh, firing a lot of rounds through a weapon to, to test the functionality, but also it can include real-world scenarios that that weapon could encounter uh, in the heat of battle. These guns, when actually on a two-way range, are going to go through pretty much hell, and we want to see how much hell we can put this through so we know that we're getting the guys what they need and they know that they can rely on it. Dudes, what's up? Hey, Larry. It's just kind of simulating what our soldiers have to go through every day. Joe, Very good to see you. Going? This is the Daniel Defense little endurance test crew out here. We got Joe, Ken, Bill, and Josh. Now I told the folks on the camera rolling up in the Jeep that uh, what you guys are doing a little endurance test out here and I wanted to kind of give them a rundown of how your layout works and, and what you got planned. Sure Larry, thanks. Uh, like Larry said, my name is Joe Marler. I'm with Daniel Defense. Uh, we're out here today. We're going to be doing some accuracy testing uh, and some endurance testing uh, with several different Daniel Defense M4s. We've got different barrel profiles, different lengths. We want to see how each one of them perform. We're going to shoot for accuracy first with all these guns. Uh, we're going to be shooting some standard M855 green tip. We've also got some Hornady ammunition that we're going to test as well as some Black Hills ammunition. We're going to shoot groups uh, this morning. This afternoon we're going to go out and do some endurance testing, run some guns on full auto bring them back and see how they still do. Cool, now like you and I talked on the phone, uh, we're gonna bring out a Daniel Defense M4 carbine and we're gonna do some torture testing to it. We're gonna do your sand test and your water test and whatnot, but we're also gonna drop the gun from some heights. Also gonna set off some explosive charges behind it. This is all designed to kind of see what the gun will tolerate and still remain functional. We know that soldiers overseas in the sandbox have had to go through all this and some of them have been amazed on how well the gun's held up. We're gonna find out how far it'll go. Sounds good, give it hell. When precision matters, 
When performance is everything. When quality is essential. With complete weapon systems, free float rails, and cold hammer forged barrels, Daniel Defense is a leader in small arms manufacturing technology. When the next shot could save your life, I trust Daniel Defense. Put on my initial Militech lube. I'm gonna wipe it off and I'm gonna follow the instructions as per the label on the bottle. I've historically just used this as a wet lube. I was corrected by the owner of Militech that you can do that, but it's actually designed to be used as a metal conditioner, and I'm gonna to try to use it that way. We're setting the stage here for the dirt test, which based on my personal experiences with the M4 carbine, regardless whether it's a Daniel Defense gun or not, I don't think this gun will have any issues with this, but this is where we're gonna start off our test. We're gonna start slow, and then we're gonna ramp it up from there. All right, time to put it back together. I'm gonna tape my muzzle, of course. Anytime you're in adverse conditions, in and out of a vehicle, any chance of getting dirt or debris in the muzzle, you need to make sure you tape it. And the tape on the muzzle doesn't affect the round going down range or accuracy or any of that, but it can definitely be a safety precaution. But got my own little technique. I take some uh, 100 mile an hour tape here, otherwise known as duct tape. Get a little piece. Obviously, make sure the weapon is clear, nothing in the chamber. In this case, I have the bolt forward, dust cover closed, and the weapon's on safe. I take this piece, put it over the end. Like that. Then I take another piece, wrap it around the side. Just like that. Taped, ready to go. All right, now, time to prep the mag. This is a USGI aluminum magazine, the standard magazine for most soldiers overseas. Soldiers using a variety of magazines, but day in and day out, this is still the most common magazine you see. That's why we're gonna use it in the torture test. Have a little bit of green tip in it. I'm also gonna put some Black Hills 55 grain ball in it. Okay, now the starting position for the carbine is gonna be the same throughout the torture test. Muzzle's gonna be taped, weapon's gonna be properly lubricated, weapon's gonna be cocked and on safe, dust cover closed with an empty chamber. We're gonna put the magazine loaded inside the weapon. Make sure it's seated, ready to go. So all I'd have to do to put the weapon in action is charge it, Put the weapon on fire and engage. It's ready to go. Now, depending on which test we're doing, I may collapse my buttstock all the way in order to support the buffer tube and the buttstock better. That's gonna be on a case by case basis. In the dirt test, we're gonna go ahead and have it extended. And now the gun is ready to go for the dirt test. Make sure my aim point's turned on, and it is. We're ready to bury this puppy. All right, time to dig, baby. The dirt test, uh, pretty straightforward, buried in dirt, try to get as much debris into the gun and the action as possible. Sand and dirt is very abrasive uh, by nature, sand especially. Uh, it gets down in all the small cracks and crevices of the firearm uh, and can definitely affect functionality uh, if the weapon isn't built correctly. There you go, baby. Now, we're gonna take a lunch break. If you can find this location and get it out there, you can get a free DDM4 carbine by the time we come back. All right, back from lunch. Doesn't look like anybody got a free M4 here. Let's see if it's still in there. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna take it, rack around in the chamber, put a few rounds into the berm for function fire, and then go over the hood of the Jeep and put some rounds on that steel. Let's see how it goes. All right, good to go there. Good 
Good to go, baby. Now it's time for the water test. You gotta love Jeeps, don't you? Okay, now it's water test time. Now, the gun's lubed and prepped as it was for the dirt test. Now, the one thing I gotta do is tie my rope to the buttstock so I'm gonna be able to retrieve it out of the drink. Take it out of the drink. Now, in theory, there's no water in this bore or the gas tube because the muzzle's taped and the bolt's forward on a closed chamber. However, I certainly would not risk that because the reality of it is if water gets in that bore or in the gas tube, this gun is going to detonate. It's extremely unsafe. Do not do it at home, and I'm not going to do it. So, therefore, I rack it to the rear. Pause, now I'm ready to go hot. Interesting, I wanna see what happens. Had a short stroke. Let me try it again. Well, it fired two rounds and then I had a short stroke. I'm not exactly sure why that happened. I racked it and it went from there. Overall, it passed this with flying colors as we expected. Now, we're done with the kitty torture test, all right? It's time to kick it up a notch as we promised. Stand by because the next part is definitely gonna blow you away. Somebody picked the wrong house. Okay, I told you we were gonna kick this up a level and I wasn't bullshitting. I got the DDM4 over there, ready to go. High speed camera and my customized Remington 870 shotgun. I'm gonna use a round of number eight lead bird shot from 15 yards and I'm gonna shoot the gun. The theory behind this is, if the gun takes a shrapnel hit, like overseas or whatnot, will continue to function. Now the whole TAC TV crew and the Daniel Defense guys are taking bets on how this is gonna shake out. My call is the magazine is gonna be inoperable. I'm gonna to have to replace it with another magazine. But once I do that, I'll be able to load and fire the weapon as per normal, including the aim point. We'll see how it shakes going hot. What do you think, is the M4 ready for this? I was expecting the magazine to fail. Um, it was an aluminum magazine. It took a, it took a really, really, really hard hit. Uh, you know, after seeing the high speed impact of that birdshot on the weapon, not walking up to it yet, I was definitely expecting to see more damage. First thing I noticed, the dust cover got kicked open. Overall, the gun looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm gonna rack it, put some rounds into the berm, and then I'm gonna engage the steel. So let's see how it goes. Now going hot on the steel, guys. It all came through with flying colors. Everything was good, and it stayed on zero, which was pretty impressive. There it is. What can I say? I actually predicted the magazine was going to die, but it came through it with flying colors. The gun did a great job. If you dug that, stand by, because we're going to kick it up a notch yet again. All right, next step on the M4 torture test. This Jeep's gonna be a critical part of this. I got my bro Bill from Daniel Defense here. Now to review, we've done our dirt test. We buried it, brought it out, shot the gun, no problems. We had it in the water, brought it out, shot twice, had a failure to completely close with another loaded round. My theory on that is we had some water in a buffer tube, I racked it, drove on. Then we shot the gun twice with number eight lead shot out of a 12 gauge shotgun at 15 yards. Gun came through that with flying colors. Now, the test is gonna be, I'm gonna put the gun down here on this dirt road, and Bill's gonna run over it at low speed with the Jeep. 
The theory behind this is soldiers over in Iraq or Afghanistan may accidentally drop an M4 out of a Humvee and unfortunately the vehicle behind them may run over. We want to see how the gun does when we run over it. If I'm able to bring it up, rack around in the chamber and engage that steel target downrange. Now, as always, aim points on, loaded magazine with Black Hills ball in the weapon, empty chamber, weapon on safe, gun is properly lubed with Militech and the muzzles taped. So it's prepped to ready to go into combat. Bill, if you're ready, I'll there put the go. gun down, drive up there and we'll get her done. The road test is a good way to test a carbine. Uh, that's something that's definitely experienced in, in a real world scenario. Uh, overseas especially, guys are riding around Humvees with the doors off, uh, and it's very common for a, a firearm to fall out and be run over. All right, let's check her out. Overall looks pretty good. A little bit of dirt here in the charging handle. What can I say, baby? Now it's time to take it up to the gravel road. We're gonna kick it up another notch. Okay, M4 vehicle test number two. We have it on the gravel road. I got Bill in the Jeep. He's gonna roll over it at low speed. We got the high speed camera. I'm gonna bring it up, inspect it, rack around in the chamber and engage the steel. My anticipation, this should go fine, but the gravel is a more difficult surface than the dirt. We'll see. Gravel is a, a much harsher environment to the weapon than the dirt might be. All right, let's check it out. Everything looks pretty good. That time we had it sideways. In the dirt, we had it lengthways. Going hot. Good to go. Now the next test is to toss that out of a moving vehicle on this gravel road. Theory behind that is you're overseas, Iraq, Afghanistan. Unfortunately, an M4 falls out of a moving vehicle and the vehicle behind you in the convoy doesn't have time to slow down or swerve to miss it. Run over it, see how it functions. That's coming up next. I thought for sure that the gun was gonna be done after that, especially when we ran over it on gravel. Once it was thrown out of the back of the truck, I thought it was going to be finished. Yeah, I mean, the fact that, you know, it landed right on top of the aim point and then a Jeep came right behind it and smashed it. The noise that Larry and I heard sounded like it just completely crumpled with it going against the gravel. We thought that this could have been bad. Oh, man. The micro took a hit. Still on. Looks like when the mag release was down on the ground, it popped the mag out, but I seated it, chambered around, and we're gonna go hot. Dude, I am impressed. It still retains zero. You know, it's not showroom new, but it's ready to roll, and you saw my shots were on target. Pretty impressive, dude. I can't believe the aim point to see it sustain the amount of damage it has sustained and still run and still be zeroed is amazing. Now I promise you we're going to take it up another notch. If you like explosions, stand by because we got something for you. Okay, time for the M4 explosion test. We're out here at the private test facility for TAC TV in the middle of North Carolina. The charge here is 25 pounds of Southern Thunder along with a diesel kicker on top. This explosive is a lot bigger than, than some of the other uh, more common explosives on the market uh, that, that civilians can purchase. My steel target here, it's about five yards away and I'm gonna drape the torture test M4 over top. Okay, the rifle, as you see it, is five feet from the Tannerite. 
Myself, the TAC TV crew, and the Daniel Defense crew have taken about two hours setting this up. We're gonna shoot from over 100 yards away, back by the vehicles. Before we do that, I wanna go through the crew and give your prediction. Ken, what do you think is gonna happen here, bro? Gun's gonna be good to go. Okay, you think it's gonna get slung or whatever? It's gonna get slung, but it's gonna run fine. Cool, Joe. I think it's gonna survive after what I've seen over the past couple days. I think it's gonna be good to go. Cool. Josh? After the test I've seen, I think it's gonna wind up over there, but I think it's gonna run just fine. Bill? It's gonna be good to go. I think it's gonna be good to go. I think it's gonna get slung backwards but I think we'll be able to pick it up and run with the gun. I mean, the guns went through a lot so far. I think it's gonna come through this with flying colors. Stand by, we are ready to bust it loose back by the Jeep. Frankly, the explosion was much bigger than any of us had previously anticipated. It's going hot! The size of the explosion was amazing. I, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, to be 100 yards away and to feel the concussion in my chest, it was just amazing. <laughs> and walking over to the weapon, we, we expected to see it just worn out. Steel fell on top of the blaster. Sling still in place. It looked pretty bad. Uh, as far as the condition of the rifle. Whoa, check it out, guys, the mag came apart. If you guys would help me pick it up. Let me check this thing out. Ah, and the aim point's broke. Yeah, I mean, when I saw, saw the lens just smashed on that aim point, I, I I thought it was toast. I never thought we'd be able to use it. But it's still on. Can you believe that? Look at this. The rear lens is broke, but the, I can still see the red dot because the red dot's projecting on the front lens. If you look through, now you, I'll be honest with you, you're not, I'm not looking through the lens, I'm looking through the hole now that's created in the rear lens, and I can still see the front dot. Wow. I'm gonna cycle the bolt. Wow, cycles. Check the chamber. Everything looks good there. The sling came undone up front. Now it sheared the sling, the buckle. I do have a spare mag of ammo, so if you guys would stand that thing up, point it that way, and I'm gonna go back 50 yards and see if I can get hits with the micro. Pretty serious whammy there, guys. 27 pounds of tannerites, no joke. All right, let's get back, guys. All right. You can see here. Everybody good? I'm going hot. Unbelievable. Can you believe that? The aim point retained zero because it throws the dot on the front lens, even though the rear lens is cracked, you can still look through it and see the dot and hit the target. Wow. Once Larry picked the gun up, uh, loaded it, racked around in the chamber and it functioned, I think we were frankly all just amazed that, that the weapon retained zero. That's impressive. Now to be honest with you, it, it did a lot more to the gun than I expected. I actually trashed the gun more than I expected it to and the aim point, but nevertheless, it came through it and the gun is still functional to a degree. Pretty impressive. And you saw we got hits on the 50 yard steel after the explosion, pretty cool. Okay, gang, we're on the home stretch for the torture test. So far, this M4 carbine has been buried in dirt, thrown into the water, shot with a 12 gauge shotgun, driven over three times by a Jeep, blown up by an explosion, going hot, and 
and now it's time for the drop test. Okay, to bring you up to speed on where the gun's at, I've had to replace the mag after the explosion. The mag no longer drops free under its own weight, but you can seat it in order to feed around. The aim point has taken a serious ding on the side and the rear lens is cracked. However, you can still see the dot inside and the last check is the gun still on zero. The gun itself still goes bang. The Daniel Defense rail took a serious ding from the falling steel and the front of the rail was squished by the Jeep. Now it's time for the drop test. Drop test number one. I'm gonna extend the gun at arm's length in front of me and drop it onto this concrete. The first drop test uh, from six feet, I think that's gonna be good to go. The weapon is designed obviously to handle so much more than a simple drop. Here we go. Pretty simple. Based on what this gun's already been through, that looks like it's a piece of cake. Now, of course, I'm gonna bring it up, rack around into the chamber, and engage that steel about 50 yards away. Okay, mag seated, chambers around, red dot still on, going hot. Okay, still on to steel at 50, but I can tell the zero is starting to drift a little bit to the right. I don't know if that's the aim point or the rifle. Regardless, I would have still hit a bad guy at 50 yards. Now it's time for drop test number two. Now it's time to take the DDM-4 up to the tree stand. What this is gonna simulate is a soldier climbing over a wall, let's say, or on a roof or the second story of a building and accidentally dropping his weapon down to the ground from around 20 feet or so. We'll see how the weapon survives. I'll come up, inspect it, chamber around, and engage that steel from about this distance. Wish me luck. I'm a little concerned about the 30 foot drop test. Uh, that's, that's a pretty, pretty far fall. Bombs away. Okay, let's check it out here. The contour camera flipped off. It looks like this is the divot that the aim point made. It landed aim point down again. Some dirt in front sight, dirt in the rear sight. You can still see the aim point. Chamber around. Everything's looking good so far. It's time to go over here and test fire it. It's gonna go hot. What can I say? I mean, I don't know what to say. The gun is it far exceeded what I expected it to do. We have a grand finale though that you are not gonna wanna miss, I promise you. Drop test part three, and this will seal the deal. Now I promised you I wasn't bullshitting. This is the real deal. What we got planned here is my buddy Joe from Daniel Defense is gonna go up with the torture test M4 in the helo. He's gonna go to fast rope height, roughly 100 to 90 feet, accidentally drop the gun, which could happen in the real world. I'll retrieve it, load it if safe, and engage the target. You're gonna dig it, so are we. Have a good one. I gotta tell you, I think the helicopter drop is gonna be the ultimate test. We've really run this gun hard. Uh, we, we put it through a lot of tests and it's already been beaten up a lot. So for it to be dropped out of a helicopter and, and impact the ground at the rate of speed that it's going to be going, it may very well fail. I'm not too sure of what to expect, but obviously uh, I believe in our product and I'm hoping that it's going to come out well. I think the gun's going to be shot. It's going to be finished. It's going to be in pieces. If it does fail, that's just fine. We've run this gun hard and it deserves to go out with a bang. Holy f Seeing that gun fall out of the helicopter, I was just stunned. It hit the ground and we're all expecting to see this gun in pieces. Okay, we got some pretty good dirt kicked up that time. Let me check it out. Aim point, believe it or not, is still on. Magazine's still looking good. 
I'm here at about 25 yards from the torso steel. Now what we've seen over the last few tests is the zero has started to drift. It's still on the steel, but on the edge. So we'll see what happens after the drop test here. Okay, going hot. Okay, zero is definitely off. The aim point is still on. It is still functioning. Even though the rear lens is cracked, you can still see the red dot, but it has lost zero. So it would need to be re-zeroed. The gun is functioning. Damn. <laughs> I'm absolutely amazed that it was able to go through everything that you guys have put it through over the last couple days and then be thrown out of a helicopter from 100 feet and still run. Uh, I think that says everything about Daniel Defense and why it's so important to take that extra step in our manufacturing process. It shows what our guns are made of. Extremely impressed at how well this gun has held up. If you have any doubts about the M4 carbine or Daniel Defense or Aimpoint products, you need to put them to rest. Top notch, as good as anybody in the world.